the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. You are all welcome to this Mass of Christian burial for Father Noel Doyle, who passed from this life after a long illness and is now in the presence of the Lord. On behalf of the Columban community, I offer our condolences to his sister Monica, sister-in-law Catherine, family members and friends who are here with us today. We pray that the Lord will also say to him, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. I'm joined here today on the, on the altar by Father Maliki Hanratty, who worked with Father Noel from Japan and his classmates as well. And so we put ourselves in God's presence. We acknowledge our faults and our failings. We ask his pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, that through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. servant and priest, the privilege of a holy ministry in this world. May he rejoice forever in the glory of your kingdom. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. On this mountain, the Lord hosts the divine of all peoples. The Lord will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples. The sheep that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all the faces and the disgrace of his people. He will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. If God is for us, who is against us? 
He who did not withhold his son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Is it Christ Jesus, who died and indeed who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who intercedes for us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither, neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. Gospel according to John. When Jesus came to Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, while Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Every Sunday at Mass, we recite the Creed, our profession of faith, which ends with, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. It is true that we recite it but we don't pay too much attention to it. 
It is only when somebody we know, a family member, a friend, or a colleague, who passes from this life, that this part of the creed takes on a whole new meaning for us. It suddenly dawns on us that we do not have here a lasting city, but we look for one to come, and that our true homeland is in heaven. Today we have come to celebrate the life and the passing of Father Noel Doyle, whom God has called from this life to himself. After a long and active missionary life in Japan, while we continue our journey in faith and hope, a journey that will take us also to our eternal home. These days, it seems, we are in danger of being drowned out by bad news. News of bad things that happen to people fill our television screens, our iPhones, newspapers and radios every day. They leave us numb and depressed. And that is why it is refreshing to recall the goodness and the good deeds of good people who leave a trail of light and goodness behind them when they depart from this world. They help to restore our faith in humanity. Noel Doyle spent most of his adult life as a witness to the good news and to the hope that it offers in a foreign country. At that time, Japan had a Christian population of less than 1% and a culture that at first feels alien to us Westerners. Spreading the good news in such a tightly knit culture like Japan is done mostly through simple presence and witness. And that is why there are, there are no spectacular influx of people into the Catholic Church. Nevertheless, the influence of the small Christian community has a positive impact on social and cultural life out of all proportion to its numbers. Like many of us Columbans, reading the Far East inspired Noel Doyle to become a missionary to spread the good news in Asia. After his ordination in 1960, he was appointed to the Japanese mission together with his classmate, Bill Curry. The Japanese mission at that time was considered the most difficult of all our mission territories. A great part of the problem, it seems, was acquiring fluency in the Japanese language and appreciating a cultural environment that seemed so different from our own. And so, upon arrival in Japan by boat, Noel immediately enrolled in the language school. He recognized the importance of mastering Japanese 
in a country where few people at that time spoke any English. After language studies, he worked in parishes, mainly in the diocese of Yokohama, where Noel was well liked by parishioners, and many of whom became his lifelong friends. After completing his first term on the missions, Noel was ahead of his time in realizing the importance of culture in the evangelization of non-Christians. And so he enrolled at Sophia University in Tokyo to study Japanese culture and religions. And then in a pioneering venture to incarnate the faith, he collaborated with Columban colleagues and helped to promote an experiential catechetical course, more in keeping with Japanese cultural sensibilities. And as it happened, it was very well received as a course very suitable for adult catechumens. Noel spent the latter part of his years in Japan as regional bursar, while at the same time helping out in parishes at weekends. And when he retired to Ireland, he wanted to get involved in adult catechesis to share his experience, and he completed a course in catechetics using the experiential method. Noel Doyle <clears throat> gave the best years of his life as a pilgrim for Christ. Like St. Columban before him, he left his country to bring the good news to a foreign people, most of whom had yet to hear the good news of Jesus Christ and to the hope that it offers. Noel realized that this is best done by simple acts of kindness and generosity that are hardly noticed, like listening to people, helping them through difficulties, instilling hope for the future, rather than by grand gestures and spectacles. And so, like St. Paul, Noel Doyle fought the good fight. He finished the race and he kept the faith. And that is why we can confidently say, blessed are those who die in the Lord. They shall have rest from their labors because their good deeds go with them. Amen. As an infant, Uncle Noel was baptized into the priesthood of the faithful. As an adult missionary priest, he shared for many years the joys and sorrows of the people in Japan. May God reward him for his labors and grant him the fullness of life. We pray to the Lord. <clears throat> that we, the members of the Doyle family, especially Aunt Monica, may be consoled in our grief by the Lord Jesus, who wept at the grave of his friend Lazarus. We praise the Lord. Amen. That Noel's parents, Sylvester and Mary, and her old father, John, will welcome him into the blessedness of heaven, where there will be no more sadness and pain, but joy and love and peace. We praise the Lord. That those who cared for, Dr. for Father Noel during his time in the Dalgan nursing home may be blessed because of the way they patiently and lovingly helped him to face death with courage and acceptance. We pray to the Lord. The people of Ukraine are being punished because they value their freedom 
and their right to live in peace in their own country. We continue to pray that the leaders of Russia will stop this carnage and destruction and come to realise that there are no winners in this war of attrition. We pray to the Lord. Lord, these are some of the prayers we offer up to you today. We ask you to hear them and to grant them through the intercession of Mary, our mother, as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. By the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, and take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Passion of your Son. 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with you elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant and priest, Noel, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him. Amen. In the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All glory and honor is yours. Almighty Father, forever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the confidence to say, Our Father. peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
And before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Noel. May our farewell express our affection for Noel. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Noel in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you bestowed upon Noel in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn to us, your servants, and help us to remain and comfort one another with the assurance of faith until we all meet again in Christ and are with you and with our brother Noel forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In peace, let us bring our brother Noel to his place of rest. Commend to Almighty God our brother Noel and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him. The Lord be gracious to him and give him peace.